Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here on the west coast of Canada. I hope that everybody is having a fantastic week so far. Students in this class we are starting this week's uh, IELTS lessons with an IELTS speaking part one. Specifically, we are going to be uh, looking at talking about shoes. Uh, speaking part one, it's a general topic on uh, an idea that uh, most or all people should be able to talk about fairly easily. Welcome Carolina, our chat moderator. If anybody has questions, you can ask me or Carolina throughout this lesson. Uh, welcome Zarina, welcome to our members, and good to see many students in here. Uh, Shub Sharat, Simran, Tiger Shadow, and Ahmed. Nice to see many students ready to learn. Uh, this lesson, everybody, is presented to you by aehelp.com. For academic IELTS, visit us there. For the general IELTS, check us out at gieltshelp.com. Make sure you know which IELTS you need to sit well before your exam. Academic is done for university entrance and school purposes. General IELTS is done mostly for immigration uh, purposes. The speaking section of the IELTS exam. It's the same for both the academic and the general. It's a 12 to 15 minute interview either face to face or through the computer from an exam center. And we will be doing some speaking practice today and we will be using our websites uh, to do this. Our academic IELTS website looks like this at aehelp.com. It's got this blue background and you can click this big red join now button that's just above my head there uh, to uh, get our premium IELTS package it's a one-time payment for lifetime access and we use this website and we use these materials in our live classes all the time so if you would like to get the best learning experience and basically get your textbooks uh, for these live classes then please join our website download our practice exams watch our videos and uh, use the course material uh, for the general IELTS it's the same idea click this big red button uh, we are an official British Council IELTS test registration center certified agents we're IDP affiliates so you are in great hands with us um, and uh, you can use uh, the discount code on our website uh, which is uh, pattern 20 that's coming from our most recent video pattern uh, 20 uh, for a 20 percent uh, discount we'll be returning back to this uh, website in a bit to talk with our students and practice for the speaking so I will actually ask volunteers questions like in the speaking section and I will give you band score estimates and tell you how you can improve uh, your writing so look forward to that shortly again use that code uh, pattern 20 and uh, of course get our apps for your phone academic IELTS help and general IELTS help our apps um, are linked with the website so you can use the websites and the apps together and Instagram IELTS underscore AE help and Instagram G IELTS help is where we post a lot of free materials and also uh, we post vocabulary and our schedules there so check that out if you still have questions uh, we are happy to answer your questions just send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com. Uh, so that's my email address and I'm happy to answer you there. Neptune, I'm not sure what you're asking about how to join the class. You can join these classes regularly on YouTube. Um, for these live classes, you can join us on the websites which I just showed you. And here's our schedule for the week. So we've got lots of uh, lessons coming up today, uh, tomorrow, Friday, and uh, Saturday, Sunday as well. 
So we've got uh, task one writing tomorrow. We've got some listening tomorrow. We've got speaking on Saturday and then more speaking on Sunday. But keep this in mind, students, our Sunday classes uh, will be on different platforms. So Sunday we will have one class on Light Hall. Light Hall is a platform that's specifically designed for uh, live teaching like this where we can do video chat. Um, click that link that I just put into our chat for joining the Light Hall class on Sunday. That's for uh, everyone and that's for free. And then uh, we will also have another class on Sunday this week which will be on uh, Discord. And Discord is pretty cool. It's a community for students like you. Um, and this Discord uh, channel is IELTS Prep and you want to look for uh, AE Help uh, when you are on the IELTS Prep server and join our live class uh, there. Welcome Amra, welcome Amrit, good to see more members uh, joining in. We will have uh, another Light Hall class on the following Sunday as well and definitely check out our latest video releases on YouTube um, where we share some very important information uh, with you as well. So I'm putting all of that in the chat so you can check those out when you have a minute. Um, we are leaders when it comes to uh, IELTS exam preparation. Uh, we are happy to help uh, thousands of students every day and we have lots of positive feedback from our students which is just fantastic. Shaikh, I'm doing fantastic. Um, I hope you're doing well also and I hope you're ready for some speaking because we're going to get into some speaking right now. So IELTS uh, speaking part one, it's the first part of your IELTS speaking interview, but it's not the first time that you are speaking because hopefully you have been speaking for the minutes and hours leading up to your IELTS exam and hopefully you will be speaking in this class. So make sure to speak and repeat. Okay, while you're watching this class, um, make sure to copy what I say, copy how I say it, uh, when I read the uh, questions and answers, repeat after me nice and loud. I speak with a West Coast North American accent. I'm Canadian, but um, it's not really a Canadian accent. There's no such thing as a Canadian accent, uh, I want to say. There are some words that Canadians like to use more than others, but uh, realistically, there's regional accents and West Coast North American is kind of one of the regional accents. It's the accent we use in Vancouver, Seattle, um, Los Angeles and so forth along the West Coast so uh, that's what I speak with it's a clear clean accent so um, copying it and using it will definitely uh, be beneficial for your IELTS exam you want to speak clearly uh, pronunciation is not crazy important in the IELTS speaking section but you do have to pronounce the words clearly enough that your examiner can understand you easily without having to guess what you are trying to say or what word you are trying to use. Now, uh, the IELTS exam uh, for the speaking, uh, you go and register for your speaking interview 20 minutes before it starts and then um, after a 20 minute preparation time because you should be preparing before you walk into the interview, not just sitting and staring at the ceiling or uh, playing with your phone, but you should be um, thinking about you know how to answer these questions, be confident, take a few deep breaths, and then you get going. You walk into the examination room where you are met by an examiner who will be quite similar to me. They're usually dressed professionally. Uh, male examiners will often have a necktie, even a, a potentially a, a jacket. So, um, so just be ready, uh, be yourself, don't stress, the sun will shine tomorrow, do your best, okay? And then uh, move on. So let's do this. Uh, we're going to uh, talk strategy and go over these questions simultaneously. So I'm going to coach you as we're doing this. And again, remember to speak and repeat, okay? 
So um, when you walk into your IELTS speaking interview, um, they ask for your identification. That's They kind of have these first few questions that are very standard. Um, it's administrative. They want to make sure that you are you. But for you, these questions are great because you know that they're coming. They're always the same questions. They help you get confident and you have to be fluent, okay? So my very first tip, okay, is be fluent from the very beginning. It's very important to be fluent from the very start of the interview, okay? That's my first, first tip. So shake those nerves and just speak in full sentences right away. Okay, let's do this. Let's warm up. Make sure when you're answering these questions and typing into the chat, you're also saying what you type, okay? So the question here is, may I see your identification? And you might answer something like, yes, you may. Um, here is my passport, which I had used to register uh, for this test. Uh, please have a look. Okay, so again, while you're typing in English, it's a good idea uh, to uh, also say or read uh, what you are uh, typing. So again, repeat after me. May I see your identification? Yes, you may. Here is my passport, which I had used to register for this test. Please have a look. Nice and fluent, confident, calm, okay? Uh, notice how I'm using the question and my answer. Yes, you may. Okay. Lots of different ways to answer this. Practice different ways of answering so that you sound natural and confident. Um, and then here is my passport, which I had used to register for this test. Please have a look. Nice and fluent. Okay. Uh, Akira, one of our viewers, says uh, yes. Gladly, here's my ID that I used for registration. Please have a look. It's a slightly different, equally as good uh, way to answer this question, okay? Uh, Dwee says, certainly, here's my identification card. Please have a look. Very good, so simple. Don't make mistakes in these first few uh, questions because it just really sounds bad to make a mistake in questions that you should know really well before you go into your IELTS exam. So with these, just be really confident, okay? Uh, Palantar says, of course, here's my passport that I use to register for the exam. Please have a look, okay? So reference them, okay? Please take a look, please have a look. Go ahead and please look, okay? All of those will work. And then usually while you still have your um, identification or passport in front of you, especially in the face-to-face -face exam, the examiner will ask for your name. And that's because A, they, they're greeting you, they want to meet you, they want to know what you are called, okay? And so they will also ask you, what should I call you? if you don't answer that, but you should answer that question automatically so that you show the examiner you prepared for the test, okay? So um, what is your full name? And then give your full name. So say something like uh, my whole name as it is in my passport also um, is John McAllister, uh, please call me by my uh, first name, uh, John, okay? So just nice and smooth here. I mean, if you are a band seven or a band eight or a band nine level candidate, certainly you need to be able to provide a person with your name, even if you're feeling nervous. Uh, without making mistakes and sounding fluent, right? So um, even a band six uh, students should be able to do that. So what is your full name? Uh, my whole name, as it is in my passport, also is John McAllister. Please call me by my first name, John. 
and then that will kind of set the tone for your interview. Okay, by this time you should be nice and calm and confident, especially if you uh, practiced. Okay, um, here's an answer by Mohammed, and Mohammed says, uh, My name is Mohammed Junaid Ahmed. You can refer me as Junaid. Okay, there would be a two in here. Okay, so you can refer uh, to uh, me as uh, Junaid. And it's better to say, Please refer to me. Okay, instead of you can, uh, I would use please. It's just more polite, more respectful, sounds better. Okay, so Mohammed, um, let's do it this way. My name is Mohammed Junaid Ahmed. Please refer to me as Junaid. Okay, and then that is polite and fluent and accurate. Again, you don't want to make mistakes. Even small mistakes like a missing two is not good here. Okay. Uh, you want to definitely uh, have a clear, clear answer for this one. Okay, all right. No mistakes, students, in these first few questions. Sound really good, all right? This is uh, Palantar on uh, their answer. Uh, well, my first name is John and my second name is Walker. Most of my friends and family member call me by first name John. Um, that's a bit awkward um, because we usually call people by their first name. So um, I wouldn't do this part. I would just say, please uh, call me by my uh, given name, uh, John. Okay. So uh, avoid awkward language. Okay. Um, you should avoid using phrases or sentences that sound unnatural, that sounds like you learned them from a bad YouTube video. Um, or from um, uh, a beginner textbook like good morning how are you doing today so you want to kind of you know be yourself be original and sound polite and natural right my first name is John and my second name is Walker please call me by my given name John okay and now you've got a good clear strong answer all right so keep it clean keep it natural keep it you Okay, in the IELTS speaking section, the examiner wants to talk to you, not some memorization uh, from some popular video. Okay, that's what we always teach you on our websites and in our courses to just communicate as you and communicate well in English. Okay, and then at th this point, the IELTS uh, examiner will say, okay, um, now for part one, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic, which can basically be anything. So don't try to guess it. Okay. So a very typical question for the first couple questions, the icebreaker questions is where do you live? Obviously somebody with a, even a starter English should be able to explain where they live. Now, when you get a question like this, think about structure. Think about details and structure. Okay, so city, country, um, residence. Okay. Now, that structure is a bit off because cities, medium sized countries, big size. So let's go country, city, residence. Okay. So I live in Canada in the province of British Columbia and its capital city, Victoria, in a uh, two bedroom townhouse with my family. Right? Big to small. So country, province, city, my residence, and then who I live with all kind of in one sentence, it's fluent, it gives a clear picture, and that's the type of answer that you want to, to give. Or you can do it the other way. You can go small to big, as long as it's structured. I live in a, a two-bedroom townhouse in Victoria, which is the capital of British Columbia here in Western Canada. Same idea as what I just said uh, a second ago, but just the other way, from small to big. So kind of like um, Google Earth, Okay, Google Earth, you can zoom in, 
or you can zoom out, but you don't want to zoom back and forth, okay? So you don't want to zoom in like two bedroom house, Canada, Victoria, British Columbia. That's more confusing, right, for the brain as well. So it's zoop, 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 zoop. Um, You don't want to do that. You want to just zoom in one direction or magnify in one direction. Okay, so uh, details in residence. So just like this, okay, I will write this again. So I live in Canada, in uh, BC, British Columbia, uh, the capital city of Victoria, in a uh, two bedroom uh, townhouse uh, with my uh, family, my wife and two uh, children. So, not a lot of uh, words, but a lot of detail, right? And nice fluency, okay? All right. Um, yeah, Angel Genesing, if you're doing part two, remember the PPF strategy. Um, no, not necessarily. Not all questions will ask you for that, Angel. Some questions focus on the future. Some questions focus on the present, some on the past. So you can't just give past, present, future for any part two question. Be really careful about that, students. That strategy only works for some questions where it's applicable. You have to pay attention to the tense of the question. Some questions, Angel, will ask you talk about a uh, birthday celebration that happened in the past that you really enjoyed. And if you're talking about the present, like my birthday uh, right now and my birthday in the future, you're going to lose marks. So be really careful with that. That's just a little side note, okay? Um, Anahita uh, is answering this question that we're looking at, which is good, Anahita. Okay, Anahita says, I live in Vadat, um, on the outskirts in Dushanbe, the capital of Tajikistan, which is a peaceful country. I live as an immigrant since I have moved from my country to here due to the war. Okay, <clears throat> Anahita, a little bit confusing, okay? First of all, I don't know, is Vadat um, a city and Dushanbe the province or a state? So I live in the city of Vadat, which is on the outskirts in Dushanbe. Of Dushanbe uh, province. And then, um, is it Vadat, that is the capital of Tajikistan? Um, and then you said, I live as an immigrant since I moved here from my country. Immediately as your examiner, I'd be like, well, what country did you move from? Okay, I can't guess the country. So you have to be specific students. The more confused the examiner gets from answers, the lower your score. Okay, you have to minimize, if not completely eliminate confusion, all right? And this is uh, my next big tip, and it's a very, very important one, all right? So here's a big tip for you. Uh, you must minimize confusion for your examiner, especially since they might not even be from that country. They could be somebody who's British, or an Australian guy or girl or somebody and they have very little knowledge of uh, the surrounding history, right? Um, so you must minimize confusion for your examiner so you have to speak with clarity and keep in mind that this person is a stranger and may lack much of the knowledge that you have. Okay, so don't talk to them like you're talking to your best friend, all right? Uh, you have to be really, really careful with that, all right? Don't confuse the examiner. You can confuse the examiner with bad English or with bad information. Keep that in mind, okay? So you can confuse your examiner with bad English or with bad information. 
you must avoid both okay one really good way to do that um, is be empathetic okay so uh, to be clear um, a use the question in your answer and B use empathy okay so by empathy I mean think about it like this if I were this examiner um, what do I need to hear for clarity okay so you should always have that in mind all right okay think about those all right um, for example let's go to this question uh, what is your favorite sport give me a nice uh, full sentence answer for this one okay so what is your favorite sport all right um, The game I love the, to play the most is football because I find it exciting and it gives me a great chance to interact with my uh, friends while uh, getting good exercise. I play uh, football almost every uh, weekend on Saturdays okay so I'm speaking to my examiner as a person who doesn't know me doesn't know why I would like to play football and doesn't know how often I play football which is my favorite game and I'm using the question so the question is what is your favorite sport right so immediately I say the game I love to play the most uh, that's a paraphrase so I'm saying the question in my answer to keep me focused and I definitely don't buy, start by saying there are a lot of different sports I like to play but the one I like to play the most don't do that especially not in the beginning because the examiner is gonna have an internal freak out okay um, so what I mean by that is uh, some students they learn these kind of catch strategies like the past present future strategy for part two um, or they learn from somebody that you should start by saying well uh, there are lots of games or sports that I play and then some people will even list start listing them like basketball and blah 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 um, so you don't want to do that okay um, so don't do this okay uh, because uh, what happens if you do this uh, the examiner knows that this kind of speaking is because people are watching YouTube videos where they're getting bad instructions the IELTS uh, exam they want you to really stay focused and be original so this uh, is not original they know that this is learned and memorized English that the student is just using to try to trick the examiner into getting fluency scores and the examiner is going to keep a straight face so they will listen at they might start interrupting you more often but if you say something like well there are lots of sports that I play like um, badminton and um, and basketball but the one that I like to play most the examiner will keep a straight face they'll look at you like this but inside of their heads, they're going like this. Oh no, not another one of these candidates that are just going to use all these like plethora and honestly speaking and on the one hand, on the other hand, and in their heads, they're just going oh, like this. I, can I just give this person a band six and go for a coffee and get on to the next candidate? Okay, so and you know that's not to be insulting that's just really what it is because imagine that examiner is sitting there and gets five of or six of these candidates every day that start with this exact same kind of well there are lots of different thank you for letting me and it's just like what stop it just stop it okay so you have to be you 
Uh, use the question. Paraphrase the question. What is your favorite sport? The game I love the most is football. I find it exciting. It gives me a great chance to hang out with my friends, get a good um, sweat going. I play football almost uh, every uh, weekend on Saturdays usually. I had a great game last Saturday. Scored some goals. Okay, good communication. All right. Okay. So answer the questions. Be direct. Okay. Uh, this is Zarina here. Um, Zarina, our longtime member, says... The game I love to play the most is Frisbee because I find it such a fun sport, especially when we are enjoying ourselves together with my opponent friend. Um, are you playing Ultimate? So the game with a Frisbee is called Ultimate. Okay, the team sport uh, played with a Frisbee. Frisbee, by the way, is... Um, uh, actually the name of the company originally there it's actually called a sport disc um, is called ultimate okay so the team sport played with a frisbee or a sport disc Zarina is called ultimate all right um, so the so Zarina this would be a little bit clear the game I love to play the most is uh, ultimate Um, because I find it such a fun sport, especially when I am enjoying myself together with my uh, friends. Okay, opponent friend is confusing, all right? Um, it's fine. I get that some of them might be uh, on the other team when you're playing. Okay, so careful, Zarina, to have clarity in your words and your word choice. Okay. Um, all right, uh, Beauty Princess. I'm not sure if you missed what I just said, but I'm going to use what you're answering here as the example of what not to do. Uh, so Beauty uh, Princess uh, says. Um, there are a wide range of sports which attract me a lot. However, I'm fond of playing volleyball and keep playing it once every week with my friends as I'm keen on playing energetic sports. So this is kind of the uh, type of answer, Beauty Princess, where the examiner goes, ooh. Um, okay, we don't need this part. There are a wide range of sports which attract me a lot. I don't need to know about that. I'm not asking you about that. A lot of people like playing a lot of different sports. And when you do this, you can make mistakes, like in this one. Um, the correct way to say this would be there are um, a uh, wide range of sports uh, which attract me. And we wouldn't say a lot because it's strange. And then you can take out the however as well. Okay. Um, so I would just start here, Beauty Princess. I am fond of playing volleyball um, because... It is a fast-paced and intense uh, team uh, sport which requires a lot of hand-eye uh, coordination. I love playing volleyball too, by the way. Um, and uh, I play it once every week with my friends as I am into such energetic sports we don't need that okay uh, because now you're talking about sports again and I'm just curious about your favorite sport okay uh, when the examiner asks you about uh, one sport talk about one sport if you start talking about lots of sports the examiner will say low coherence I wasn't asking the student about lots of different sports I was asking them about their favorite sport okay All right it's very very important to stay focused with the question all right students so keep in mind answer questions specifically be you give explanations give examples remember the examiner is a stranger they do not know uh, what you know okay 
So I'm still learning cricket. We have lots of students uh, from uh, India and obviously cricket is one of the um, popular games there and I still don't know much about it just because it's not it's not familiar to me even though there are some cricket clubs in Victoria where I live it's just like my friend and I we were looking at a scoreboard trying to figure out um, what the scores were and yeah all right um, so that's how you do it and now uh, let's do it together so let's do some speaking okay so I'm going to put on my ears because we're actually going to talk to each other. So um, best way to learn how to speak is to actually speak. And I want to give you opportunities to do that. So after this warm up session, the examiner will introduce the general topic of part one. So they will say, let's talk about uh, shoes. That just happens to be the topic. Um, they can choose that kind of a topic. So they might not talk about clothes, they might talk about just shoes or even just hats or something like that. So, so let's talk about shoes and then they kind of have a good set of questions like this, like maybe six to 10 questions that they can ask you about shoes, like where do you buy shoes, what are your favorite shoes and so on. And you have to answer those questions um, well. The questions do increase in difficulty. so each question becomes a little bit more challenging than the previous because of grammar or because of detail. Now, uh, again, to get all our videos, students, remember, use that code PATTERN20 for that 20% discount, okay, on the websites, and we're going to use the website right now, okay? So the website that we're going to use is aehelp.com. That's academicenglishhelp.com. Um, a lot of you already have accounts with us on the website. You can use this for free, students. So you do not have to pay. You can use it for free. But if you want the best, I definitely recommend paying. Um, a little bit of money goes a long way. Invest in your future especially when it comes to education. Uh, so let's go to the website. And the website looks like this. Uh, if you watch that little video, you'll see me give a little explanation of that website. Um, and then um, you have the uh, Join Now button here. You can click that to get access to the premium version of the website. But if you're like, nah, Adrian, I just want to use this website for free. Um, then you can click this uh, green button here um, and sign up. You just need a, an email, obviously, to create your account. Uh, because then what you can do after you uh, register is you can log into your My Student account. So here I'm basically taking you to our uh, chat interface where you can use audio uh, as well as video. But we're, I'm using video for YouTube, so I'm only going to use audio. As many of you know, you can only use your camera for one piece of software at a time, and I'm using it for um, YouTube, uh, which makes sense because I can't be in two places at the same time. Um, so once you're in here, you have your computer-based practice exams and all these great pop-down menus. You have an interactive course. You have uh, uh, our workbooks and our study plans, our uh, exam books audio CDs, uh, but what you're really going for here, students, is the student partner speaking. It's right there. Um, student partner speaking, you can click on that and you can talk to other IELTS students and practice for your IELTS. It's like a great place for students to get together and do IELTS practice. Um, you can also book speaking interviews with me as well um, to get the full IELTS experience. Uh, that's by clicking that. Uh, these buttons are just above my head, everybody. Um, and right now, uh, we are going to click on a student partner speaking. Uh, you accept the terms, which basically means that you are going to be respectful and polite and focused. And then you get into this uh, this page, okay? In this page, uh, now we have Zarina in here, Mohammed, Omerjan, uh, Yash, Mazad, Tina, uh, Nazrin, uh, Domenico, Paulin, Akbar, Shox, Dwi, Mohammed. Um, and then once you're in here, you can send me 
a message by clicking on the blue envelope, which is right there, the little blue envelope that you see kind of off to the side there. You can click on that and you can send me a message. You can say, uh, I'd like to volunteer. My handle in here is uh, master. Okay, so that's what you're looking for. Um, and then you click on that and you say, I'd like to volunteer. And then uh, we can uh, begin. So uh, you can practice your speaking with me. All right, <clears throat> so uh, we already have a few volunteers. Uh, which is great. Um, Omer Jean is a returning student from Kazakhstan. Uh, let's see if Omer Jean is available. I think he's been practicing very hard to improve his communication skills. Um, are you ready, Omer Jean? Omer Jean says yes. Okay, well, let's start with Omer Jean. We'll move along nice and smooth here. Let's get into it. Hello, oh, good evening. Oh, you're a morning. I am morning, Omer Jean. Yes, it's uh, seven uh, forty in the morning, uh, and um, Omer Jean, you are still in Kazakhstan. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, but soon you hope to be. No, you hope to be in Kazakhstan because you said that you're doing IELTS for a uh, high-end university in Kazakhstan, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. See, I'm learning about our regular students, which is fantastic. Um, Omer Jean, good. Um, so you've been practicing speaking uh, for the last little bit. Yeah. Um, how do you practice your speaking? Well, I usually record myself on my phone and listen it and try to find mistakes. Okay, and then do you uh, re-speak and re-record once you do that? Well, I usually write my mistakes and try to re-record again. Okay, yeah, that's it's always a good idea. I know it's sometimes a bit tiring to go through all these steps, but um, it's good to you know practicing it correctly. Um, are, have you um, like do you meet up with a tutor or with classmates uh, at all or somebody that you can speak English to? Yeah, uh, through three days ago, uh, I uh, talked with my friend. Okay. In English and uh, like exam conditions. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. That's really uh, it's really great to you know find a person that you can regularly meet with and then uh, practice um, the the real exam situation um, and um, make sure that you're switching between examiner and student so at one point one person's the examiner at the other point the other person's the examiner it's really good to practice uh, asking the questions not just giving the answers so that you get more empathy from the position of the examiner as well does that make sense yeah Okay, cool. All right, Omer Jean. Well, uh, let's get into it a little bit. Um, let's go through the uh, start of the speaking section interview. And um, just like in previous classes, give me some uh, nice uh, fluent answers that are you. Uh, keep in mind that um, uh, speaking part one is about you. So focus definitely on yourself. Use I, me, my, myself. Okay? Okay. All right, so here we go, everybody. This is what a speaking section interview sounds like at the start. So um, welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test. I'm recording this for clerical purposes. This is candidate number 98517268, examiner number 9912. We are conducting this exam in Nur Sultan. The time right now is 14 o'clock. Now we shall begin. May I see your identification? Yes, please take a look. What is your full name? My first name is Omerjan. My second name is Bikpolatov. You can call me Omerjan. Okay, Omerjan. The speaking has uh, three parts. I will give you instructions for each for part one I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic where do you live I live in Nur Sultan uh, this is the capital city of Kazakhstan I live in uh, in flats with two bedrooms with my family and what is your favorite sport I really interested into football since my childhood I've played football a lot and even now I find football interesting because 
it helped me relax and usually I uh, I get this extracted from problems let's talk about shoes Uh, do you um, prefer trendy or comfortable shoes? Uh, well, I more prefer comfortable shoes because I have uh, flat feet and uh, uh, the reason of it is I have to wear comfortable shoes. Uh, three, three days ago I wore um, uh, 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 sneakers which was uh, sized down for me and I felt myself awkward. Can you easily find shoes in, uh, in your size in stores? Yeah, definitely, yes. My size is uh, 41st and I can see it in every shoe store. Uh, a week ago I bought my new sneakers and uh, I didn't feel any, I didn't find, I didn't find any problem about it. Okay, I'm going to stop there. All right. Um, good. All right. You're getting better, Omerjan. Um, so your communication is certainly becoming uh, clearer and uh, more confident, um, which is fantastic, and that's having a positive effect on your score. I think that for this start, you are definitely in the uh, 6.5 to 7 range um, for your answers, and I think that you're doing the correct practice by recording and checking your mistakes and then fixing them, because you do make small mistakes with your language use, so meaning that with your choice of words and with your grammar, you have some slight mistakes that are making um, your responses a bit awkward and a little bit difficult to uh, comprehend, but you are definitely compensating. You're making up for a lot of that with um, better communication than before and confident communication. Uh, let me go back and just specifically reflect on a couple of your um, answers, okay? Uh, okay. So the start of it was very good. Um, now I said, may I see your identification? And you said, uh, yes, please take a look. It's okay to do that. I mean, you can still get a band nine even with a very short um, start like that. But you you should try to prove a bit more fluency from the very beginning. Um, so uh, even just by adding a word like yes, certainly, uh, please take a look. Um, just shows a bit more confidence in what you're saying. So yes, certainly, please take a look. I would say at least something like here is my passport, okay? Um, so just to complete that. So right from the start, give that full sentence, okay? Um, and then I asked you, uh, what is your full name? Um, that was really good. So when I asked you your full name, I could tell that, okay, here's a person who's obviously prepared for this exam. You gave me your whole name. You told me what you want to be called. You sounded very fluent and confident and well-practiced and natural. So that made me feel comfortable as your examiner, okay? The examiner likes to feel that the candidate they're speaking with um, has practiced, prepared, and is ready to, to you know, do their best. And, and you definitely gave me that with your when you presented your name, um, and that was really good. Uh, same with where you live. When I asked you where you live, you said I live in uh, Nur Sultan, it's the capital of Kazakhstan. You explained to me that you live in a two-bedroom condo, if I remember correctly, and it was very good, very clear, fluent, natural. Uh, confident excellent um, then I asked you what is your favorite sport and you said I really interested in football and I think you used an M in there like I'm really interested in football I am right um, here's a tip for everybody okay Omirjan uh, keep this in mind when you are in the speaking section especially at the start of the speaking section don't use contractions. Do you know what contractions are, Omerjan? No. Okay, a contraction in English is when you do the I'm like this instead of the I am like that. Okay, and we have lots of them in English, right? Like I've uh, instead of I have, right? 
So mm -hmm. we call that a contraction. Contract means to pull together, right? So in grammar, when we pull together two words, uh, we call that a uh, contraction, okay? Um, there are multiple reasons that you want to avoid uh, contractions um, at the beginning of the speaking section. And again, this is for everybody. So this question is for everybody, not just Omri Jean. Um, why? Why, should, why do you think I'm telling you to avoid contractions, especially at the beginning of the speaking section? So this is a big tip for everybody. What do you think, Omri Jean? Um, I don't know. So, like, instead of I don't know, it would be I do not know. <laughs> I. <laughs> right? See that? So, contractions are very common um, to us. And it's kind of weird. You're probably thinking, like, it's weird that Adrian's telling me this because I thought contractions are more advanced, more natural language. And your thinking is right. Contractions are more advanced and natural language. But, and there's a big but in there um, and that's what we're trying to figure out so um, right now I'm showing you this example I said what is your favorite sport and to me it sounded like you said I really interested in football so to me that would <clears throat> mean that that sounds like a mistake um, you notice how uh, Grammarly is underlining it as well because Grammarly is saying also that there should be an am in there like an I am really interested in football um, so you should avoid uh, contractions at the beginning of your uh, and you should avoid them completely for your task two writing by the way in professional writing we don't use contractions okay so you should avoid contractions at the beginning of your speaking section for multiple reasons okay um a uh, so you sound very accurate okay and clear Okay, uh, there's another reason though. So um, if I say, Omir Jean, I am really interested in football. What else happens when I don't contract? Can you tell me? Other than mm. clarity. I have no idea. Okay, Anna says you're speaking more formally, which is true. That's why we don't use it in um, uh, writing task two. So not using contractions is a more formal uh, type of speech. But there is another really important reason. And I'm wondering, I'm looking at the chat as well, Omerjan, to see if anybody is helping you out here, picking up um, uh, the reason there. Okay. Mm. Yeah, Nazrin just answered the question in the chat. Um, which is really good. Um, yeah, Nazrin, you're right. So Nazrin says you stress the fact. Yeah, and another way to say that, Nazrin, is you emphasize the information. Yeah, Carolina, very good. Carolina, our chat moderator, also just answered that. She said you emphasize the information. Do you know what I mean by that, Omrijan? You emphasize the yeah. information, right? Like you make it sound strong. And you know, here for this question, it's a perfect example because I'm asking you about your favorite sport. It's like your number one sport. Um, and uh, when we want the listener to really get that that's our favorite sport, one way we can do that is by taking apart the contraction and really pronouncing each word. Like, I am really interested in football. As a child, I have been into football um since the age of three and i watch it every day on tv and play it with my friends every day on on or every saturday and sunday right so we stress the information as well so um and there's actually a third reason which is we slow down our speech Um, for clarity and because a lot of students especially higher level students Omar Jean, are might be a little bit nervous at the beginning they might speak a little bit fast like even you with those first couple questions you were pretty fast on those answers almost on the too fast side um, one way to slow down your speech is to take out those contractions like instead of saying I'm really interested in football you can say I am really interested in football and then that will slow down um, the uh, speech and then here um, you started to kind of over explain and it started to get a little bit strange and you said I get extracted from problems um, 
we wouldn't use the word extracted in this kind of a context. So it was a bit awkward, um, but I get what you're saying. I think what you're trying to uh, say there in a simpler way. Do you know how to say that in a simpler, more accurate way, Omarjan? I get extracted from problems. Mm. The thing. I forget about my daily troubles or my daily yeah. problems okay so um, it helps me forget uh, about my daily troubles okay that's how we would say it so let me fix this answer a little bit and then you will see where I'm going with it so I'm really interested in football um, ever since I was a, a child. I have loved both watching and playing the sport um, as it is great exercise, really exciting, and it helps me forget about my daily uh, troubles. Um, I just had a lovely game last Sunday. Also, of course, football is great because you can play it anywhere, just about any time, because all it takes is a ball and you. Um, okay, um, so <clears throat> here's this question again. Omir Jean, let's practice it. I'm going to uh, repeat the question, repeat the answer, and then once I'm done, copy the answer. And this is for everybody, so whoever's watching, um, copy this answer, okay, so that you have clarity in these tips that uh, we're discussing um, right now. Uh, so what is your favorite sport? I'm really interested in football. Ever since I was a child, I have loved both watching and playing the sport. It is great exercise. It's really exciting and it helps me forget about my daily troubles. I had a lovely game last Sunday. So Omir Jan, what is your favorite sport? I'm really interested in football ever since I was a child. I have loved both watching and playing the sports as it is great exercise. Really exciting and helps me forget about my daily troubles. I just had a lovely game last Sunday. Very nice. Okay, so that's what a band nine sounds like. Okay, so I'm giving you obviously the highest level of the answer here and it's nothing to do with being a native speaker or not. It's mostly to do with great word choice. Uh, good ability to control emphasis um, and uh, have extreme clarity for that listener. Okay, so Omir Jean, you're on the right track. Okay, you're taking the right steps and um, just keep uh, keep doing what you're doing. Keep coming back to these classes and keep practicing as much as possible. Speak as, in English as much as possible and you're going to uh, really benefit um, from that. Not just for the IELTS, not just for getting into uh, the University of Nur Sultan, but uh, also in many, many other aspects of life, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Omer Jan, thank you for being my first volunteer this week. That's awesome. And I hope to see you back again later on, okay? I, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fire away. Uh, I didn't hear my... No, uh, I think I have some trouble with my internet. Can you say again my bent for speaking part one? Yeah, so I think that your answers so far would be in the 6.5 range um, because of the grammatical mistakes affecting your coherence and your word choice affecting your coherence. Okay. So careful with word choice, careful with grammar, but as far as communication skills go, you're doing much better. Okay? Okay. All right, Omarjan, keep it up. We'll talk later. Bye. Bye. All right, that was Omer Jean being very studious. That's fantastic. Give Omer Jean a thumbs up. Um, he uh, he was a good volunteer and he helped uh, you know to identify some of these important points. So everybody remembers now: contractions not at the start. Okay. Once you have um, made it clear for the examiner that you understand the use of the be verb and other auxiliary verbs like have for present perfect, okay, or using modals like would um, clearly, then later you can contract like I've and I'd and I'm. 
so that the examiner can see, okay, the person can use both formal and informal language and they can uh, control the contractions in their speech. Uh, professional speakers definitely are able to control when they contract words in English and when they avoid contractions in speaking. And remember that tip that I said, avoid contractions in uh, writing especially, okay? All right. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, Dwi, uh, one of our um, newer members. Uh, yeah, Dwi, are you ready? Uh, I can't remember. I think Dwi is volunteering from Indonesia, if I remember correctly. Um, I will take more and more volunteers, though. We're going to kind of move through here again. I'd love to see some new volunteers as well. Okay. So Dwee, if you are there, if you are ready and your microphone and uh, speakers all set up, let's do this. Here we go. Hello, sir. Hi, Dwee. How are you? Um, I'm doing better, but everything is all right. How are you doing? Um, I am doing uh, pretty good, thank you. That sounded like you're being optimistic, which is nice. So it sounds like you have a little bit of uh, challenges in life, but you're staying optimistic. And, you know, that's always the way to uh, come out on top. So good for you. Stay on the positive side. Um, Dwi, um, where are you right now? Uh, that's correct. Your first suggestion that uh, Indonesia. Indonesia. Part. Okay, awesome. Cool. Um, all right, Dwi, um, do you like shoes? Um, I into shoes. I have a lot of shoes in my room, from the sneakers to the flat shoes. Yeah, um, I find um, women tend to really like um, shoes. Guys do, <laughs> guys do too. But I, I, I do think that there seems to be a, a kind of gender difference there. I have two daughters, and they're tiny, but they love shoes. I have a one-year-old little daughter, and I can't keep her out of the shoe closet. She keeps trying to climb into the shoe closet and get at the shoes, and I just can't understand why she finds shoes so amazing sure. but um, anyway <laughs> okay so uh, we'll... <laughs> let's let's talk about shoes then so are you ready to answer a few questions yeah whenever you're ready sir okay all right so um, let's uh, talk about shoes do you prefer trendy or comfortable shoes I definitely go to the trendy because nowadays people are people are seen by the things what they're wearing uh, because some people use it uh, to post the picture of themselves on the Instagram or media social and I definitely want to show off my um, clothes and I, I like to have it with my suitable shoes. Uh, can you easily find shoe size in your, can, sorry, can you easily find your shoe size in stores? Um, yes, I, I think that I have a, an average size for a woman in Indonesia, it's 38. And whenever I went to the shops for uh, sneakers or flat shoes, I could definitely buy my shoes at the first time because the size is always available there uh, what kinds of shoes do you usually wear and why um because i have been working in the office uh, usually i go to the office at the seven in the morning and i get back at the age in the noon or i'm sorry in the night so i really need to use comfortable shoes for me um because it's easily for me to move from one floor to another and my last uh, day I purchased a new shoes for me that is the pink uh, ribbon flat shoes for for the work do you spend a lot on shoes um no I don't think so um I have a lot of shoes but it's not expensive as, as people think because I always look for the discounts and sales so if the shoes is, is really beautiful but it's not on my range I will not buy it so I spend a fridge of my money on the shoes but not too much 
Okay, um, let's stop there. That's really good. All right, um, good job, Dwee. Uh, that would be, I think, a solid band 7.5, okay? So your fluency is uh, band um, 8, 8.5. Your uh, coherence is 7.5. Um, your grammatical range and accuracy is also 7.5. Um, your pronunciation is an 8.5. You speak with very clear English for the most part. Well, 8. There were a couple words that I was like a little bit like me, but, um, but quite good overall, quite natural sounding. Um, and your vocabulary is quite strong also, I can tell. Uh, so good for you. And your, your confidence has really improved. And, um, you know, just like Omir Jean, uh, absolutely by coming to these classes, participating, uh, doing what both of you are doing, great way to build confidence. And that's having a very positive effect on your score, just like his. Um, so let me address your uh, responses uh, specifically. Um, I asked you, do you prefer trendy or comfortable shoes? Uh, and uh, just like Omer Jean, you very quickly decided on one and then explained it. And that was really good. Um, in these kinds of questions, it's really dangerous for students to be unsure. Um, so on the IELTS, you, even if you don't know for sure, you just want to pretend that you do and just pick one, right? Like, I like both. I like trendy and comfortable, but that can be difficult to explain. So you just chose one and you went with it. And then you said, I definitely uh, go, uh, use the word will here. I will definitely. I will definitely go for uh, trendy. Uh, because nowadays people are seen. I thought your answer was okay, but I definitely think there is a way to make this answer better. Um, do you know what my suggestion might be, Dwee, to make this a better answer for the information? Um, showing the example of the definition of trendy. No, in part one, really? I'm always in part one. I'm always trying to emphasize this fact to the students. Part one is about the who. Example. Who is part one about? Oh, uh, me. You specifically, yeah. you right and. Um, um, here, um, it's very specifically, do you prefer trendy or comfortable shoes? Um, so here, you know, you started to generalize. You said nowadays people are seen by what they wear. Um, you just want to be yourself, right? So I will definitely go for trendy because um, I feel people judge me by what I am wearing, right? So make okay. it personal uh, because I feel um that um people often uh, judge me by what i am wearing and i want uh, people to think uh, that um, i uh, look both pretty and smart um, yeah. and i have a lot of self-respect Okay, um, so just say it, right? Uh, the IELTS examiner likes that kind of cold truth, right? Um, okay. So, and then, uh, and then instead of saying people take pictures of themselves, um, you can say, I like to uh, take pictures of myself uh, top to bottom, right? Because we're talking about shoes, top to bottom. Um, and post them on my uh, personal and professional profiles. Now, don't lose the question. Uh, so having trendy shoes uh, gets a good response okay. from the audience. Okay, so that would be making it personal and that forces you into good vocabulary and, um, and, and a clear answer. So let me just repeat this and then copy it after me and you'll see that it's just a much clearer, more direct answer, right? So do you prefer trendy or comfortable shoes? Why? I will definitely go for trendy because I feel that people often judge me by what I'm wearing and I want people to think that I look both pretty and smart and I have a lot of self-respect. I like to take pictures 
pictures of myself top to bottom, post them on personal and professional profiles. So having trendy shoes gets a good response. Uh, do you prefer trendy or comfortable shoes? I will definitely go for the trendy one because I feel that people nowadays often judge me by what I'm wearing to uh, to the office or what uh, clothes I use on the social media. And I think that I really want people to see me both pretty and smart uh, so that I could have a lot of self-respect. Um, in the free time, I like to take pictures of myself and then post it on my social media for personal or professional uh, platforms. So having trendy shoes uh, is a mess for me because it could get me a good response from the audience. Awesome. Okay, that's really good. Yeah, that's a really good answer. Okay, so just like that. So really keep it about yourself, right? So that you're showing the examiner that, okay, I know this part is about me. You want personal information and I'm going to give that to you with good explanations. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Thank okay. you so much. Okay, all right. Now, uh, do we, uh, do, this is just for everybody. Do we uh, deserve the 7.5 because she paid attention to a couple of uh, very important details? Like when I asked Dwee, can you easily find your shoe size in stores? You said, um, yes, I think that I have an average size for women in Indonesia. That was a very nice explanation. And then you gave me a number. You said it's 38 because I have no idea what an average shoe size for women is in Indonesia. So um, by giving me that number, that gave me a lot of clarity. And then you said, because uh, so whenever I go to a shoe store, um, they always have my size and you gave me a really good explanation there. Um, and that was good. Uh, Omerjan did the same. Omerjan also said my size is 40. So he paid attention to that uh, number, that quantification. Quantification is very useful for uh, clarity and it helped both of you uh, for your score okay um, what kinds of shoes do you usually wear it was a little bit wordy but overall it was very good and you gave a good example there about a pink pink shoe now I didn't get that one word you said ribboned shoe ribboned flat shoe um, ribboned 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 now, see, um, I, I might not know that shoe. <laughs> so, what does that mean? It's kind of, uh, it has a line of a uh, ribbon that is uh, attached on the shoes. Okay. Uh, I kind of get it. Now, here's a, a you know, an important piece okay. of advice, right? Um, I bet you mm -hmm. that women generally will know a lot more about shoes, especially when it comes to specific kinds of shoe vocabulary than men. So here, if you have a male examiner like me, you might have to be careful oh. because you might actually have more English than me <laughs> about shoes. So you might know different like uh, vocabulary that I've never heard of just because I don't have, you know, men basically have two types of shoe, dress shoe and running shoes. And that's it. That's where our shoe knowledge stops. So women have kind of a lot more designs and styles of shoes and, yeah. and a lot of a lot of men have no idea about that. So. <laughs> um, okay, uh, so always speak to your examiner as a unknowing stranger, right? Okay, Dwee, okay. Um, thank you so much for volunteering and I hope you have an awesome rest of your day. My sure is mine, sir. Thank you for having me. Goodbye. Bye, Dwee. All right, that was Dwee from Indonesia. Give uh, Dwee a thumbs up. Um, yeah, um, so Roshni says, said Reebok. So it was the, uh, it's Reebok. Reebok. It's the type of shoe. Roshni got it. All right. Um, okay, good. So nice volunteering. Uh, let's take somebody else. Um, we have um, uh, Mohammed here. Uh, Mohammed says, please give me a chance, rectify my mistakes. Mohammed, sure, are you ready? Uh, let's see if Mohammed is still hanging out with us. Okay. <laughs> Califemi says, I think it's ribboned, not rebox. It is probably ribboned. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> us guys trying to make sense of ribbon shoes. Okay, um, Mohammed is ready. All 
Hey, Mohammed. I'm reaching out to you. Are you there? Give it one more ring, Mohammed. Nope. All right, Mohammed, you got to check out what's going on with the uh, setup on your end there so that you can pick up the phone. Um, okay, uh, let's uh, let's go from the bottom here. Let's go, Nabeen. Uh, Nabeen, are you ready? I'm trying to find a couple of new uh, volunteers as well. I did see you there, Sarah, and a couple of others, and I'll definitely get to you at uh, some point here. If not today, then tomorrow. Let's give some new people a chance also that have not had a chance to speak. Nabin, if you are there, give us a sign. Um, there's about a five second delay between my voice and your real time, so we'll check here. Okay. Um, no Nabin? Still no Nabin. All right. Um, let's try uh, Brajesh, maybe? Might be new. I don't know. Brajesh, are you ready? All right. Looking for a sign. Uh, Nazreen, if you want to volunteer, you have to volunteer through our website. So anybody who's like, oh, how are they doing this? Um, how are they volunteering? It's through our website, ahelp.com. You sign up and then you click on student partner speaking. Okay. All right. Uh, Brajesh. Hi, Brajesh. Yes, sir. Hold on. Uh, I'm going to mute the YouTube first. Perfect. Yeah, that way we'll stop. Yeah, hi, How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you, Brajesh. Uh, Brajesh, may I ask, where are you calling from right now? Uh, I'm, call uh, I'm from uh, Darjeeling. It's in West Bengal, India. Right. And we've spoken before, right, Brajesh? Yes, sir. We have. We have. Okay. Yes, yes Darjeeling is oh, hard to forget. We I keep referencing the movie so um, okay Brajesh I'm going to ask you a couple of questions for part one now I'm going the questions I'm going to ask you are um, the ones that come a little bit later in part one and you will notice that they get a little bit more challenging so here's a little tip for you uh, to be fair um, is uh, make sure you use the question and the grammar of the question in your answer okay so that's just a little hint at the beginning are you ready Yes, sir, I'm ready. Okay, here we go. Um, <clears throat> so, do you spend a lot on shoes? Uh, usually, it depends uh, what kind of shoe that I'm looking for. Uh, if it's something that I like, that I really love, uh, then I don't mind spending it in a shoe. Like, recently, I bought a really nice shoe from Nike. It was an Air Jordan 1. Uh, the, the, it was panda uh, why it was called a panda because uh, it had a black and white silhouette to it and it had that furry texture to it so I spent almost a uh, hundred dollars in that shoe and I'm pretty satisfied with it have the kind of shoes you wear daily changed over the past 10 years mm. I don't think so it's changed because uh, I've stuck to sneakers uh, because I find sneakers more comfortable it's pretty light so I've always chose uh, sneakers and uh, rather than there, there are shoes like boots and those bo uh, those kind of shoes are like pretty heavy and uh, it's it's kind of it hurts your uh, it hurts your legs uh, on a day to day basis uh, when you uh, use that for a longer period of time. So for a long walk or something. Uh, if uh, you could buy out, any pair of shoes in the world, what would they be? Uh, <clears throat> I would go for this uh, suit made by Nike. It uh, they took a reference from. Sorry for that notification. Uh, <clears throat> they took a reference from the movie called uh, Back to the Future, and uh, 
there was this pretty dope suze in that mm, movie na uh, uh, what uh, uh, it's like you know it ha- it has that automatic kind of laces in it so it's pretty good so i would love to buy that suze in the future if i get a chance uh okay just a sec that's the end of part 1 now we'll continue with part 2 okay done typing good i've caught up to you more or less okay that was pretty good that was pretty good um all right definitely a band um 7 to 75 as well so kind of similar level to uh Dwee. it was good you're confident uh, you speak well um i think if you yeah, make I... some corrections to your content you can easily get a seven five or even an eight um so you have good vocabulary you have good language you need to put it together a little bit clearer uh so mm-hmm. i said do you spend a lot on shoes and you said usually uh it depends on what kind of shoe i'm looking for uh be really careful using the it depends um it depends yeah, can so. lead to very confusing uh conversation <clears throat> because it's not clear right it's not this or that it's just one um here with your answer i would have just said yes i do spend a lot on shoes when i like the shoes Um so I would have just gone with that clear positive especially because your explanation and your example were focusing on spending a lot of money on shoes and you didn't actually tell me about not spending a lot of money on shoes so the it depends is kind of useless does that make sense Yes sir, yes sir, absolutely. So, um so do you spend a lot of <clears throat> shoes a, a lot on shoes you can say uh, yes uh I do at times. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um but then you said uh, what kind of shoe I'm looking for sure. Um and then you said if it's something that I really love then I don't mind spending a lot of money on the shoe. I spent a lot uh, on these Air Jordan 1 uh, ones furries or pandas <laughs> you called them. Um Yes sir. All right and then you explained that they were furry and you spent like $100 on them that was a really good answer by the way that was really good so clear you gave me an example of the shoe you told me how much you spent um what you think is expensive which is really good Okay and then I asked you this question have the kind of shoes you wear daily changed over the past 10 <clears throat> years and you said I don't think so it's changed um this is where you want to avoid that contraction okay so i do not uh think it has changed okay okay because you really want to emphasize that present perfect for me so i do not think it has changed i have stuck to sneakers because um they are comfortable plural with shoes all the time they are comfortable and light Um and then you started to talk about boots. And as your examiner, I'm kind of like, why are you talking about boots? <laughs> right? So, oh, yeah. I, I was like, trying to com- <laughs> compare it. The- I get it. I I get that you're yeah. comparing it, but it's it's an irrelevant comparison, right? Because it's okay. not um what you're wearing, right? So, um yeah. so I got that, but then and then you kept that and I, and I got that you're comparing. So I was like, okay, he's comparing, let him talk about the boots but then you kept talking about the boots like non-stop and I was like okay I have to interrupt him because he's now just talking about boots that he doesn't wear um so you can't do that in the speaking okay you can't just go off okay. tangent on a a a side answer okay so um I have stuck to sneakers because they're comfortable and uh light um I wore uh sneakers uh back in uh grade uh 6 and uh as you can see you can show the examiner your sneakers if you want <laughs> you can <laughs> lift out your foot and go and as you can see i'm wearing and here you can use a contraction because you're later on now and it's clear and as you can see i'm wearing uh sneakers at the moment just make sure you're wearing sneakers and you don't show the examiner a pair of boots um at the moment okay 
<laughs> All right, so uh, use the grammar of the question, make it very clear, especially with the present perfect, use the clear have, okay, instead of the v, um, and then stay on topic. So um, here we go, uh, just repeat after me. Have the kind of shoes you wear daily changed over the past 10 years? I don't think it has changed. I have stuck to sneakers because they are comfortable and light. Um, I wore sneakers back in grade six, and as you can see, I'm wearing sneakers at this moment. Um, have the kind of shoes you wear daily changed over the past 10 years? I don't think so, it has changed. I have stuck to sneakers because they are comfortable and light. I wore sneakers back in grade six, and as you can see, I'm wearing sneakers at the moment. <laughs> I can't see. Are you wearing sneakers right now? Oh, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I don't know. You're like, here, everybody, look at my sneakers. All right. Okay, so uh, stick to the grammar, right? Emphasize those yeah. words, those auxiliary verbs, and don't ramble off topic because then you'll start losing scores eventually, all right? You'll make more mistakes. Yeah, keep that in mind, sir. So. Yeah, yeah, keep that in mind. Thanks, all right. Um, have an awesome rest of your day, uh, Brijesh, you too, and uh, we'll talk later. Chance. Absolutely. Yeah, Bye for now. Time. All right, that was Brijesh from Darjeeling. Um, very good. Okay. Um, all right, everybody. Uh, let's take one more. Let's take, uh, let's see if uh, Sarah is still with us. She's very studious. Sarah says, salute. I'm late today. Can I volunteer? Yes, you can, Sarah. Um, another candidate from another very different part of the world. We've had Indonesia. We've had uh India, we've had Kazakhstan, and now we're jumping to Western Europe, if uh, Sarah is here. And if it's the same Sarah, I think it is, probably. Um, but I'm not sure if Sarah's still with us, so we'll see. If not, we'll take somebody else. We've got lots of volunteers, which is nice. I'm always looking for new people as well, so don't be shy if... Um, if you're new and you haven't tried this yet, give it a go. Give it a try. Uh, I won't bite. I promise. Okay. Um, all right. Kanil says, the trick is you're meeting your old friend after a very long time. Yeah, Kanil, what I actually tell people is like uh, you're uh, meeting your grandfather or your grandmother. That's a good way to do it. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if Sarah's here. Uh, let's try Becaris. Becaris. Uh, maybe it's here. Becaris, are you there? If Becaris is there, we'll go with Becaris. I wonder where Becaris is from. It's a very interesting name. Are you there and are you ready? friendly um, emoticon all right <laughs> Roshni says I tried that but it terrifies me well if you're terrified of your grandfather or your grandmother then definitely don't do that okay uh, Edgewall, um, this is uh, the website aehelp.com where we're doing this all right Beckeris Maybe not ready. Maybe left to go to bed or for sleep. Uh, let's try Huang. Huang, are you ready? Hang in there, students. You never know when your turn might come. Some people come, some people leave. Some people um, don't have um, their uh, phone hooked up. So Huang, if you're ready, here we go. Uh, Ujwal, you do not have to pay to use this. That's 100% free, students. 100% free. Hi, Huang. Hello, teacher. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, Huang, um, where are you in our big, beautiful world right now? Yeah, I'm from the country Vietnam, which is located in the Southeast Asia. Nice, nice detail. I like that answer. Um, which city are you in? Ho Chi Minh? Uh, no. Uh, my I, I, the, the city where I am located in is uh, Hanoi, the capital city. Hanoi. Yes. Right. Okay. That that would be my other guess. All right. Um, Hanoi. Nice. Um, okay. So, uh, Huang, uh, why are you doing the IELTS exam? 
Uh, I need uh, the uh, IELTS score to uh, graduate in uh, university as a uh, university in uh, Vietnam, yeah, you know, yeah, uh, regard the IELTS score as a criteria to for uh, high school students. All right, um, so you're kind of like Omer Jan, who was volunteering earlier today. Omer Jan is in Kazakhstan, and Omer Jan um, it was doing or is doing uh, IELTS. Uh, because the university in Kazakhstan needs IELTS too. So this is starting to become a very common trend in the world where if you want to go to university, you need an IELTS score or you need an English score um, for sure, which makes sense, which makes sense. Yeah. A lot of information is in English. So let's do this. Uh, let me try to help you a bit. Um, are you ready to answer a couple of questions? Of course, sir. All right. Um, then let's do it, uh, Huang. So let's talk about... Uh, shoes. Uh, do you prefer trendy or comfortable shoes? Well, uh, in this situation, I would say that I prefer the, the com comfortable shoes that it uh, really suits me. Yeah, when uh, when uh, uh, preparing shoes in uh, different conditions of weather, I can uh, yeah, no no more nervous about it. Um, if you could buy any pair of shoes in the world, uh, what would they be? Uh, sorry, my in internet is, is a bit laggy. Can you repeat the questions for me? Yes. If you could buy any pair of shoes in the world, what would they be? Uh, well, I consider myself as an uh, as a sporty person, so I love to choose uh, basketball shoes. Yeah. Especially the signature shoes from uh, famous bowlers like uh, Kobe Bryant or Kyrie Irving. Have the kinds of shoes you wear daily changed over the past 10 years? Well, of course. I'm currently wearing a pair of uh, Beatles shoes, which is made <laughs> from Vietnam. Well, if my memory serves me correctly, 10 years ago, it is has uh, just uh, been uh, yeah, created and, uh, the, and the model of shoes has changed a lot uh, with uh, beautiful straps and uh, more, more modern shoelaces. Okay. Huang, good. Um, Huang, so that would be about a band 6.5, but I think you can do better. Um, 6.5 because you're fluent. It could it could be maybe even a bit lower, 6. Um, you're definitely fluent, but your answers are um, slightly confusing. And that's because it sounds to me like you're slightly confused. Um, about your answers. So when you're not sure about what you're telling me, definitely I'm not going to be sure about what you're telling me. Does that make sense? Uh. So if it sound if it kind of sounds like you're like you're uncertain of the information that you're giving me and it's not a it's not a strong piece of information, then for me it's difficult to uh, follow along with you. Let me let me explain to you uh, in more specifics. Um, so I said, do you prefer trendy or comfortable shoes? And then you said, well, in this situation, I would say um, this kind of a start, like, well, in this situation, I would say um, to me, it's telling me that you're not sure about what you want to say and it's only specific to this situation do you get what I'm saying yeah I see so yeah. um, a really important tip Hoang for you to get a higher band score is use affirmative language do you know what that means use affirmative language uh, affirmative yeah use affirmative a f f r Oh, sorry, A-F-F-I-R-M-A-T-I-V-E, affirmative language. Yeah, I, I, I've seen that word when uh, I get, as the meaning as wrote that in some shooting games. 
Yeah, af- mm. exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like affirmative, um, affirmative in, in the shooting games that you're talking about uh, means that I understand what you're saying. Yes. Affirmative, right? It means like I got it. Yes, affirmative, yes. clear, right? So um, affirmative language, if you took the word firm out of it, affirmative language basically means like decisive and confident. So instead of using words like I might, I would, if I could, um, you're using lang- language like I can, I do, I will, right? So that's affirmative language. So do you prefer trendy or comfortable shoes? I prefer trendy shoes i prefer comfortable shoes that's affirmative language because i don't like my feet to be sore i don't like my feet to get tired right so that's affirmative language so i prefer comfortable uh, shoes because uh, i walk a lot and i want to avoid uh, having sore feet uh, this is the reason I wear uh, sneakers most of the time. So that would be affirmative language. And affirmative language will always outscore um, uh, kind of this, uh, I don't want to say wishy-washy, but uncertain language. Does that make sense? I see, sir. Okay, so um, here, because you started with this, well, in this situation, I would say, and then you said, well, when I'm preparing shoes, um, when I'm finding the right shoes to wear in different weather conditions, and now you're telling me about different weather conditions, it's getting really tricky, and you're really losing my comprehension, right? So even though you have lots of good vocabulary, I can't give you a good score because I'm starting to not understand what you're saying. So stick to that affirmative language. Okay, uh, let's try it with this first question and then you can practice more at home. So uh, here we go. Do you prefer trendy or comfortable shoes? I prefer comfortable shoes because I walk a lot, like, five to ten kilometers each day and I want to avoid having sore feet. This is the reason I wear sneakers most of the time. Uh, Do you prefer trendy or comfortable shoes? Oh, uh, I prefer comfortable shoes because I walk a lot from five to ten kilometers per day and I want to avoid having sore feet. This is the reason I wear sneakers most of the time much better. Can you feel how that kind of communication with a new person, a stranger like an examiner, will just lead to a much better result as far as comprehension, understanding what's going on? I see. Yeah, at that moment, I was a bit nervous. Yeah, yeah, and that's exactly, so very good. I'm happy you mentioned that because, you know, um, a lot of students are the same way. A lot of candidates are the same way. And that's why being nervous is so dangerous because when you're nervous, you're not confident. And when you're not confident, then, of course, you're less coherent, right? So, um, but you're doing the, the, you know, you're taking the right steps. Volunteering in this class and doing this with me is the first step in the right direction to to gain that confidence and give those affirmative answers so good job Huang oh, thank you sir this is my first time talking with you <laughs> I got that Huang and you, you see how like a couple of the students that we heard today um, like uh, uh, Omir Jean uh, for example and Dui they you heard how like they're quite confident in their voice and that's because they've come back and they've done this two, three, four times and now they're just sounding a lot more confident. So come back again, uh, Huang, and I guarantee you you will start to feel that improvement, okay? Yeah, thanks you, sir. Okay, have a great rest of your night in Hanoi, Huang. Yeah, thank you so much. Bye for now. All right, let's give uh, Huang a thumbs up. He did a great job there. That was really good. Uh, Thank you, volunteers. You've all done a fantastic job, and you all deserve my double thumbs up for the day. Uh, Carolina, thank you so much for moderating the chat. I saw that you answered a lot of questions 
uh, for uh, people in the chat, which was fantastic. A lot of people were asking me what website we're using for that. This is our website. This is what we use. Um, it is uh, aehelp.com for academic IELTS and uh, gieltshelp.com for general IELTS. Uh, students, um, on these websites, use the premium course. Sign up for that premium package. So click on that uh, red um, button uh, for that one-time uh, payment. Um, it's not a lot of money. It's actually quite cheap compared to other IELTS uh, products out there. And it's much better because you get to join um, and use these live classes with all of the materials in your hand or on your computer. So click that button. Again, we're British Council Certified Agents, IDP affiliates, um, partners, so we know what's going on. Uh, thank you again. Uh, tomorrow, Task 1 uh, writing members for graphs and charts, and then uh, we will have uh, listening section 1 and 2. Uh, for everybody where we will listen and answer just like the real exam um, and lots and lots more uh, IELTS practice speaking uh, coming up in the week live classes so I hope that you will be with me join me and uh, keep up the good work everyone much love to all of you uh, wherever you are and uh, chin up and forward I'm Adrian signing out for now bye